Hello and welcome to Career Launcher. With only 33 days more to go to CAT 2021, as a part of our daily preparation exercises and questions that we have been sharing the solutions for, that are questions that are taken from our mocks. In this particular video, I'll take you through the solutions of question 44, 51, and 56 of Countdown CAT 9 that was very, very recently concluded. So this is question 44 of Countdown CAT 9. The product of all roots of the equation x square minus 36 is equal to four, under root of 4 mod x plus 9. Uh, under root of x square minus 36 is equal to under root of 4 mod x plus 9. The first thing that you need to understand is because x and x square are there in the uh, x mod x and x square are there under the square root and the domain of the square root is very clearly defined that it will only take positive numbers. That means the roots of x cannot be imaginary. We are typically only talking about the real values of x that can take over here. So if we square on both sides, what are we going to get? We get x square minus 36 is equal to 4x, 4 mod x plus 9. x square minus 36 is equal to 4 mod x plus 9. So if we have 4 mod x, we can write two equations over here. x square minus 36 is equal to 4x plus 9. Or you can write x square minus 36 is equal to 9 minus 4x. If x is negative, then what happens? And x is positive, then what happens is what you need to take care of over here. So if x square minus 36 is equal to 4x plus 9 and x square minus 36 is equal to 9 minus 4x, for the first equation, you get x square minus 4x minus 45 equal to 0. So if x square minus 4x minus 45 equal to 0, x square minus 4x minus 45 equal to 0, x can be, this is equal to x minus 9 into x plus 5 x minus 9 into x plus 5. So x could be equal to 9 or x is equal to minus 5. But this is where these kind of questions become a little tricky. Could you have taken x is equal to minus 5? If you take x is equal to minus 5, under root of x square minus 36 would become under root of minus 11, which would violate the domain of the square root function. So x is equal to minus 5 could not have been a possible solution. Only x is equal to 9 could have been a possible solution over here. Similarly, if you look at the other part of it, if you look at the other part of it, here you'll get x square plus 4x minus 27 equal to 0. x square plus 4x minus 45 equal to 0. Equal to 0. x square plus 4x minus 45 equal to 0. In this case, what you'll get is x plus 9 into x minus 5 equal to 0. So x is equal to minus 9 or x is equal to 5 are two other possible solutions. So please understand again, if you put x is equal to minus 9, if x is equal to minus 9, x square minus 36 will be positive, which is okay. We are fine with x is equal to minus 9. However, if you put x is equal to 5 over here, again, you'll get the same result from the first root, which is which will lead to an imaginary number and it is the square root that we are dealing with. Hence, we could not have considered x is equal to 5 either. So the only two possible values of x that I could have considered is 9 and minus 9. The question is asking what is the product of the roots of the equation? It has to be minus 81. It has to be minus 81. Please understand one thing for sure that this x is equal to minus 5 and x is equal to 5 also if we consider if we consider these four to be the possible solutions, then you'll get 9 into 5 into minus 9 into minus 5, which is equal to 45 square, which is equal to 2025, which is also present in the options, option 4. But that could not have been the answer because 5 and minus 5 would violate the domain of the function that is given over here. 5 and minus 5 could not have been possible solutions. Only 9 and minus 9 could have been possible solutions to this question. The next question, question 51, let's take a look at this. If the sum of the first 20 num terms in an arithmetic progression is 120, 20 terms is 120, and the sum of the next 20 terms is 280, what is the common difference over here? See, in an arithmetic progression, the catch of the question more often than not in an arithmetic progression question is that the average of all the terms. If you write any numbers, any number of numbers in an arithmetic progression. For example, this is an arithmetic progression. What is the average of these five numbers? You will always find that the average of arithmetic progression is the number that is written in between the median. For odd number of numbers, there exists a unique median. However, if I write even number of numbers like this, 
there are these six numbers and you have to find, find the average of these six numbers. The average of these six numbers would be the number that is written in between, which is actually not written. The number that is between the third and fourth term, 3.5. Or you can call it the 3.5th term becomes the average of this arithmetic progression. Using the same logic, if you are having 20 terms whose, if you are having 20 terms whose sum is 120, that means the average of the 20 terms, average of the 20 terms is 6. This is the number of terms and this is the average. And if you are writing 20 terms, and if you are writing the 20 terms, the average of the arithmetic progression is nothing but the number that is lying in between the 10th and 11th term. So there is a 10th term, there is an 11th term, then you will find that the 10.5th term, this term is equal to 6. This term is equal to 6. Similarly, average of the next 20 numbers is 280. That means the average of numbers from the 21st term to the 40th term. Sum of 21st term to the 40th term. This is 20 numbers again into, an, uh, again, the average of these numbers will be 14. The average of these numbers will be 14. This will be the average of the next 20 terms, 14. And here you have number of numbers again, 20. So the average is 14. When I say from term 21 to term 40, the average is 14. That means I'm talking about the number in between. So essentially, I'm talking about the term in between the 30th and 31st term the 30.5th term, this has to be equal to 14. This has to be equal to 14. Now that we know that the 10.5th term is 6 and 30.5th term is 14, the difference between them is 20 terms. In 20 terms, the difference between the numbers is 8. What, is, what has to be the common difference? The common difference should be number of terms divided by the total difference. The, uh, number, Total difference divided by the number of terms, 8 by 20, 0 0.4 should be the common difference of this arithmetic progression. Let's take a look at question 56. This is again a question based on average. Raju has n cards which have consecutive natural numbers written on them starting from 1. One of the cards was missing. The average of the remaining cards was 35. What is the sum of possible values of the missing card? Now, when you are writing... 1 to n, all the numbers are typically in an arithmetic progression. And what do we know about the average of an arithmetic progression? It is always the middle number. So if I'm writing, let us say I had only five cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The average is 3. The average is 3. If I remove one of the cards out of these five, let us say I remove 3, the average still remains 3. If I remove 3, the average still remains 3. If I remove 2, then the average of the remaining four terms the average of the remaining four terms, 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 1, this becomes 3.33. If I remove 4, the average of the remaining four, remaining four terms becomes 2.67, right? So whatever term we are removing, whatever number we are removing from the number of terms that are written, whatever number, number we are removing from the number of terms that are written, that will be that will be very close to the initial average. The average after removing one term will also be very close to the remaining re uh, initial average. So if there were the average was 35, we could have said that there are anything in the range of 2 into 34 to 2 into 35 cards. That means anything in the range of 68 cards to 70 cards could have been there on the table. So the number of cards possible on the table initially could have been 68, could have been 69, or it could have been 70, right? Now, if there are 68 cards, if there are 68 cards and you remove one of the numbers, and if you remove, if, there, if n is equal to 68, if n is equal to 68, then the middle term is 34.5. Then the middle term is 34.5. So if all 68 cards were intact, the average of all the numbers would have been 34.5. So the total sum would have been 34.5. The total sum would have been 34.5 into 68. You remove the number X. As a result, there are only 67 numbers whose average is 35 now. You remove the number X. As a result, you have only 67 numbers whose average is 35. What can we say about the number that has been removed? What can we say about the number that has been removed? We can say we can say that the number x took the average with itself. 
took the average with itself 34.5 but what it did was after removing that number x the average of the entire group increased by 0.5 that means the number x also returned the number x also returned the number x also returned 0.5 to all of the 67 numbers that are remaining so the number x took 34.5 and then returned half for 67 numbers so return 33.5 as a result we can find that the number x that was removed was 1 you can use equations and find this i am just using deviation to find this let us say initially there are 69 numbers all 69 numbers once 1 to 69 if all the 69 numbers are written in an ascending order then you will find that the average of the numbers is 35 that means 35 itself was the middle term 35 into 69 was the term. If you remove one number x, in this case, in this case, if you remove one number x, the remaining 68 numbers average 35. So 65 into 30, 69 into 35 minus x gave you 68 into 35. That means the number that was removed itself should be 35. The number that was removed itself should be 35. If there were initially 70 numbers, the initial average would have been 35.5. And the total number of numbers was 70. Now, if you remove an x, the number of numbers remaining becomes 69 and the average becomes 35. What did x do? X could have, x would have taken the average 35.5 with itself. Average 35.5 with itself. Also, removal of x caused a decrease in the average by 0 0.5. That means x would have, x would have taken away 0 0.5 from the remaining 69 numbers that is 34.5 this is the total value that x would have taken out that is 70 so x should have been 70 in this case what is the question asked the question is asking what is the sum of all possible values of the missing card what is the sum of all possible values of this missing card if initially there were 68 cards the missing card would be 1. If initially there were 69, the missing card would be 35. If the initially there were 70, the missing card would be 70. As a result, the average would have been, the sum of all possible numbers would have been 106.